Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. So I don't have that fear. I can't even empathize with that fear yeah. of speaking in public because I've been, I was on, on stage through, straight through elementary school and part of high school. So, mm -hmm. um, and as an adult, you know, in, in quite a few bands and stuff like that. So I can't even empathize with it, but, but. Your create your your creation of aimed at at, at kids um, will probably help us bring forward a, a whole generation of people who are able to just to speak their mind when when they need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, the fact that um, you took the acting when you were young, mm -hmm. uh, and and you know it helped you. That's that's exactly what I'm aiming at. Uh, I know that the younger we get to kids, the less fear there is. Uh, they, they, some of them are, are naturally more shy, but when we, when you, when you can make it fun, make it almost a game, then it's really no big deal. It's not as big of a deal. And, uh, the more they do it, the better they get at it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been really a joy for me to watch kids who were formerly shy or introverted or, or afraid to say anything, um, learn that their thoughts are valuable and that their voice matters and that they now have the, the, the courage and the skills to say the things they want to say when it needs to be said. And, and yeah, it's all about um, telling kids that they have the right to speak and that their, their stories are important. Right. So you definitely don't dis subscribe to that that uh, age old saying that uh, children should be seen and not heard. <laughs> children should be seen and not heard. Hey, were you talking to my mom? <laughs> I, I, I I think your mom and my mom were moms at the same time, right? <laughs> yes, I think they were. Yeah, I heard that many many times, which is really ironic now, you know. So yeah. Yeah. I don't believe it, no. I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. And in fact, there are a lot of kids speaking out now these days, and it's a good thing because the adults have kind of dropped the ball. I, I am thinking of uh, Greta Thunberg in particular right now. You yeah. know, she's started an entire environmental movement, and uh, no adults have been able to pull it off so far. Yeah, when she first, first started, um, she was... Uh, fourteen or fifteen, right? Because I know mm -hmm. that right now she's 15. probably cl close to she's probably close to to eighteen now, probably close to being mm -hmm. an adult now. Yeah, um, but yeah, but she was a frustrated kid and was just tired of nobody listening to her, and and then people started listening, and 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 you know that's probably not going to happen on that scale, obviously, with everyone. But the thing is. is there are things that all of us want and need, and we're not going to get any of those things unless we learn how to ask for them. Right. Um, we, when we talk about uh, Greta, of course, um, uh, the uh, number one bully on the block uh, was even stunned by her. When, um, Say again. I'm sorry. The the number one bully on the block was even stunned by her, um, Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, he is I, the number one bully on the block, and yeah, he's afraid of of a 17 year old uh, young person. So he, there you go. Uh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> so that. 
and you, it looks like you're you're trying to teach a whole generation of of children like that. So, yeah, the, uh, that's that's the goal is to give as many kids as possible the tools uh, that they need to 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 speak up to find their own courage. It, it, there are not a lot of places for kids where they can speak their minds. Uh, I know schools on occasion will, you know, have them write an essay or something, but really uh, my program is about asking kids to think about who they are, what's important to them, and then I help give them the tools to give that message to the world in the most authentic and engaging way and, and to help them push through their fear. Uh, so, yeah, I think um, most of us have not been taught public speaking. Um, private schools do teach public speaking because they know it's important. Uh, mm -hmm. They know that it's effective. Uh, public schools, for the most part, do not, although the province of British Columbia just three years ago included, uh, newly included, uh, the spoken language component into the curriculum. Uh, it, it's new, and most teachers don't uh, have any content yet for it uh, and don't have any training either, but uh, it is, at least has been recognized as something that is important and needs to be done going forward in the future. Our, our kids really need to know how to communicate, especially now, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with our phones and stuff like that. It's super important to be able to get across the things that you want to say precisely and effectively so that people are going to listen. Right. So with that being said, um, of course, this, uh, this is our five tip show and you have five tips with you, right? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I have five speaking tips and it's so funny because that's the name of my book. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 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 so, would you like me to begin? Yeah, let's start off. What's number one? Okay. Okay. Um, this one might sound a little odd, but to me, it's maybe the most important thing, and it's something that people forget to do when they're speaking, and that's breathe. You have to make sure that you don't forget to breathe. I know uh, I've seen people take a breath, and mm -hmm. then kind of let out a sentence or two in, in the exhalation of that breath. And it, you can't keep up that way. Mm -hmm. uh, taking a breath, one long, deep breath before you begin will ground you. And it will also slow your heart rate so that your body is not freaking out so much. So uh, to me, that's the very first thing that you do in public speaking is breathe. Well, I, I I know some some trained professionals and broadcasters that forget that one little that first little rule. We 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 won't mention that he's speaking right now. We won't say that. <laughs> 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 On a serious note, though, it's like yeah, I do. For, I forget to 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 just to breathe normally, right? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And and before you begin, though, I think a deep breath is very, very helpful. It does slow down your heart rate because many people, when they're about to speak before an audience, are nervous and their heart their heart is beating fast. So this will calm you down a little bit. It, it genuinely helps. Mm -hmm. All right. So make sure we breathe. Yes, make sure you breathe. Don't forget to breathe. I, I used to, I used to forget myself. I really did. Uh, I, I had to be reminded of it, and I, and I remind my kids of it still. Um, it, it's just a nervous reaction, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and it can be overcome. So, shall I move on to the next tip? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one is stand with your feet solid on the ground, if you can. Uh, if you're able-bodied, obviously. Uh, if not, then make sure you can sit up straight and feel as grounded as possible to the earth. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is, again, 
a, a physiological thing. This helps to ground you and it helps to make you feel more solid. If you're if you're kind of rocking back and forth or mm-hmm. pacing, it's number one distracting and to the audience and to yourself. So standing with your feet shoulder width apart mm-hmm. uh, is is ideal in my opinion. Right. And if you're in heels and you know many women who are speaking are same thing uh, if you can keep your balls the balls of your feet on the ground same thing just stand as solid as possible. And and you can move uh, during your presentation, but it should be deliberate, deliberate movement. So mm-hmm. stand. Yes. <laughs> stand tall. <laughs> All right. Okay. Shall we continue? Yes. Continue. Okay. The next one is a big one. <laughs> and I'm just going to call it the pause. I think... One of the things that people are most afraid of when they're speaking is the silence. Silence from themselves and silence from the audience. And many people feel like they have to fill the silence in, and you don't. Oftentimes when we desperately try and fill in silence, we say really dumb things. (laughs) Mm, Yes. So it's okay to pause and take a breath or two. No, nobody's going to explode waiting for you. Uh, nobody's going to think you're crazy. And it's best to wait and think rather than just let whatever's in your head tumble out of your mouth. So pause yeah. and don't be afraid of the silence. <laughs> I think that was a Depeche Mode song, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Enjoy the silence. Enjoy, yeah. Okay, the next tip, shall I move on? Yes. Okay. The next tip is super important, too. Um, don't be afraid to mess up. Don't look for perfection. When you are speaking, uh, no matter where you are, because you are at the front of the room, and you are standing up, and you are speaking, and nobody else is, you will be perceived as someone who is something of a leader or someone who has knowledge in a particular field. Um, Even if you're just giving a, a, a class project, same thing. You are at the front of the room, and you're perceived as the person who knows what they're talking about. And... It's okay to mess up because it humanizes us. Uh, People actually kind of like it when they see speakers stumble over their words once in a while or forget a line or or miss uh, uh, something on on a projection. Uh, It's what what I do is I laugh it off uh, and move on. And, and people, it, it usually breaks the tension. The, the audience will laugh with you. It's no big deal. You become human instead of this perfect person who knows everything. Because you're not. Nobody is. Yeah. So uh, messing up actually humanizes you. And acknowledging it is the best thing you can do. Just briefly. Just briefly. Like, oh, sorry about that, folks. I missed that page. Or, you know, yeah. something like that. Just briefly. Don't make a big deal out of it. And uh, and then move on. Yeah, I had that happen once. I was I was giving a talk to um, to a room full of entrepreneurs, and mm-hmm. um, one it was a kind of a stressful day because traffic was all screwed up, and and the uh, and the facilitator was kind of ticked off of me because he. he He's like, mm-hmm. oh, you got here too late and stuff like that, and and, and right. it's going to take you so long to to have everything set up. But I already have my the thing was I already had my team in place, and they had they had me up and 
going within five minutes of of my arrival. Wow. <laughs> while he's, while he's, 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 he's gone, gone on about about me uh, being tardy and stuff like that. Um, huh. I, I said, look around you, and he's like, what? It's still going to take you like at least a half hour to set up. I was like, if you look around, you'll see that I'm I'm ready to go. Yeah, and I was actually still on time regardless of the of the traffic. But when I got into Excellent. the talk, mm-hmm. I had a perfectionist in the audience, and there was a, a grammatical error in one mm-hmm. of my slides, mm-hmm. and. Um, she couldn't. She couldn't let it go. Right. So what I did uh, was is like because it was obvious. It was an obvious mistake. It was a huge, huge grammatical error mm-hmm. po- pointing at us, and I was like, oh well. well I guess the, the dyslexia kicked in on that day, didn't it? Well, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and until it was all said and done. Um, I wound up, I wound up hiring this this young lady to do my editing. That's hilarious. <laughs> well, it, I mean, I was like, I was looking for an editor anyway because because <laughs> right? because, because I make mistakes. I'm a human being. I make mistakes, so I needed an editor. Yeah. And and why not you? Because you can't let it go. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, you you never know what what's going to what's going to help the rest of your talk if True. you if True. if you get so stuck on on mistakes because you got to keep moving yeah. forward. You oh, know? for sure, for sure. So yeah, yeah. so that's a really important and one. Don't be afraid to is, mess up. It is. It is. Yeah. And and it actually flows right into the last tip really nicely. And that is to practice. Um, the more you practice your piece, the better you're going to know it and the more authentically you can give it. If you're reading something for the first time, you're going to be looking down a lot at your paper you're not going to be connecting with the audience as much. You're not going to be looking in anyone's eyes. Uh, so I always recommend to my kids before they give a speech to at least practice it 10 times at home. And honestly, I, I myself do it many more times than that, but kids are kids, right? They, they have, you know, basketball <laughs> games and stuff. So, um, and I'm sure that most of them don't even do the 10, but some do. <laughs> but yeah, the more the more you practice, the better you know your work, the better you're going to deliver it. And connecting with your audience is really what it's all about. And um, and people will appreciate the the time and the effort that you've taken. Uh, and the thing is, too, though, is even though we have practice, we can can and will still mess up. And again, that's fine. And it's even something that you can refer back to later on in your presentation for a laugh. You know, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, practicing practicing is like anything. If you were playing the guitar or the piano or or learning how to, uh, you know, dribble a ball in basketball better, practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And public speaking is no exception. Right. Do you, um, mm-hmm. So, with with everything you just said there on the practice part, do you have mm-hmm. um, do you have a, a routine? It it it, it is um, it is talk day, and you're going to be me, on. It is it's talk day, and you're going to appear on mm-hmm. stage that particular day. Do you have a routine that helps you get ready for that? Um. Not in particular. I, I I make sure that I know my talk at least the night before. Mm-hmm. I, I I have to feel comfortable with it. On the day of, I always get an upset stomach regardless of where I'm speaking. If it's on the comedy stage or on a speaking stage, uh, I still feel kind of sick. Um, so I don't eat actually on speaking day. And I, I've been told by world champions of public speaking that they recommend that you actually speak.
speak hungry. Uh, It's better to feel a little bit hungry than to go on uh, full. And I actually do eat a little bit of chocolate just before I start. A little bit of energy. So, um, yeah. Oh, and I also do, and and, um, you've probably heard of the power pose, yes? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I want to preface this with, um, the research about the power pose has been debunked, but I still feel that it is an effective tool. So before I begin, I spend a couple of minutes standing uh, somewhere else in a power pose uh, with my hands on my hips, my feet spread uh, slightly more than shoulder width apart, and I breathe, and I stand like that for two minutes, and I just kind of feel my power. Mm-hmm. And then I go on. Yeah. So, so yeah. J- just so everybody gets gets a really accurate dis- description of it, think of standing like Superman <laughs> or Wonder Woman. Or what? Yeah, or Wonder Woman. That's it. It's a really yeah. good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both, right? Yeah. They're all in that classic pose, aren't they? They're yeah. all in the "I'm going to kick some butt" what? pose, and and that's uh, that's what you want to feel like before you go up. Also. Perhaps most importantly, is remembering that you have a gift to give those people. And it's not about you. It's about them. Mm-hmm. So you just want to give it to them as genuinely as possible. And and when you remember it's about them, it's easier to give the gift. That is very true. Mm. So... That that mm-hmm. I I think um, I th- actually I think in that in that regard you gave six tips. <laughs> <laughs> a bonus one. Yeah, there, there's a bonus prize here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, um, the, your your website is it's Head Start Speaking um, dot. Com or dot ca? It's headstartpublicspeaking dot com. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it, with that, what are some of the best ways to get a hold of you so that um, to do, you can that work with my the seven-year-old? The best way, <laughs> absolutely, the best way to get a hold of me is through my website. Yeah, uh, and my my phone number's on there. If anybody wants to call and talk about the program a little bit, uh, I do nine-week workshops. That, that I bring out to schools, homeschool groups, uh, girl guide troops, stuff like that. And I also have after school classes for a more individual uh, speaking curriculum. And, and it goes on for longer, too. So it's for people who really want to dedicate a little more time and energy to the craft of public speaking. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I logged onto your website, I found this really cool video. Okay. Um. And it's you talking about things, but more importantly, it there was the last testimonial. Uh, uh, it was a mom, and mm-hmm. she said that that th- this should be taught in schools. Have you been able to work yeah. with any any school districts so on this? I've worked with individual schools so far, but not school districts districts yet. Uh, I'm I'm finding. Um, bureaucracy challenging, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I've got my shovel out and I'm digging through it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We all know how the, yeah. the, the bureaucrats like to spew stuff in, in, in our it's path. It's a huge step. <laughs> it really is. So if, if any of you actually, any of your listeners are interested in bringing public speaking to your school, uh, call your school principal, call your uh, district superintendents, and let them know that this is something that you're interested in. Because as I said, this is part of the BC curriculum now, and there are very, very few teachers who are um, equipped to teach public speaking, and um, even fewer who have the content. So uh, I can definitely help teachers and schools out uh, in bringing this this incredibly crucial skill to kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd say it, 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 it is absolutely crucial when we look at some of um, 
our science heroes, um, our so just just overall heroes in in general i always go with science because i was a big science geek in school mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and um with that um i'm also reminded of of albert einstein who mm-hmm. um had to overcome lots of obstacles and if he hadn't learned to to actually speak in public yeah there's a lot of things that that uh, in our world that we wouldn't see today because it's so true. What would we have lost? Yeah, yeah. Uh, brilliant ideas are are the spark, but if we can't get those ideas out there, we may as well not have had them in the first place. It's so important to be able to 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 convey your ideas and and your thoughts and your opinions. They they matter. They're important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I I think that that's like the, the really big big message that, that your business provides to to our society that um, those ideas need to be heard, right? They certainly do, and especially from young people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they they're they're inheriting a very different world. And they really need to be able to navigate it as as efficiently and effectively as possible. So uh, their voice is a tool, and and learning how to think about who they are, and being able to say that uh, to the people that matter is is a tool that they're going to need, uh, and we need to equip them with that. We owe it to them. Yeah, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. So you prov- you are actually providing a very crucial service to to our society and to future generations. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you for listening to us today. Please find and click on the subscribe button so you can get continued updates from us.